Good afternoon, dear colleagues and guests. Uh, today is the 23rd of June, 2020, uh, 15 o'clock sharp. Let me declare open a session of the Decision Council for the Defense of Thesis by Lagoris Sergeyevich Siege for the Degree of Candidate of Philosophical Sciences, Academic Specialization 090011, Social Philosophy, on the theme problematization of the philosophy of history in the works of Mikhail Lifshitz. Under orders St. Petersburg University, dated the 17th of April, 2020, number 3881-85-1, Ms. Trepko, Alexander Ivanovich, Doctor of Political Sciences, Professor of the Department of Conflictology at St. Petersburg University, was appointed Chairman of the Dissertation Council. Uh, members of the Dissertation Council were appointed by the same order. Let me introduce them. Under order of St. Petersburg University of the 23rd of March, 2020, number 2304-1, our meeting is held in the remote access mode, which includes my colleagues, members of the Council, and the degree applicant. Kamne Vladimir Mikhailovich, Doctor of Philosophy, Professor of the Department of Philosophical Anthropology of St. Petersburg University. Can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you. The answer is positive. Osipov, Igor Dmitrievich, Doctor of Philosophy, Professor, Head of the Department of Philosophy of St. Petersburg University. Igor Dmitrievich, can you see and hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you. The answer is positive. Arefiev, Mikhail Anatolievich, Doctor of Philosophy, Professor, Head of the Department of Philosophy and Cultural Studies of St. Petersburg State Agrarian University. Mikhail Anatolievich, can you see and hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you. Excellent. The answer is positive. Danilov Alexander Nikolaevich, Doctor of Sociological Sciences, Professor, Head of the Department of Sociology of Faculty of Philosophy and Social Sciences of Belarusian State University of Ministry of Education of the Republic of Belarus, Corresponding Member of the National Academy of Sciences of Belarus. Alexander Nikolaevich, can you see and hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you. Yeah, thank you. The answer is positive. And the degree in Kuznetsov Nikita Sevaldovich, I beg your pardon, Doctor of Philosophy, Professor, Head of the Department of Conflictology at St. Petersburg University. Can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you. The answer is positive. And the Degree applicant, Lagrev Alexei Sergeyevich. Alexei Sergeyevich, can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Also, here are the academic advisor of the applicant, Kotov, Eduard Alexandrovich, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Associate Professor of the Department of Russian History from Ancient Times to the 20th Century at Petersburg University. Can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. Sokolov Alexey Mikhailovich, Doctor of Philosophy, Professor, Department of Social Philosophers at Petersburg University. Alexey Mikhailovich, yes, I can see you perfectly well. Thank you. The answer is positive. So, all the members of the Dissertation Council, as well as the degree applicant, are present. We can all see and hear each other. Dear colleagues, since our meeting is held in the remote access mode on the St. Petersburg University order, of the 23rd of March, 2020, number 2304-1, I invite all the participants to follow the procedure in case there's a technical failure and you stop seeing or hearing someone, please inform me. I will call a technical break until such issues are eliminated. In case the connection with me is lost, let me ask Kuznetsov Nikita Sevaldovich who's next on the list, to call a technical break. Uh, and if you can, rest, uh, can contact restore with me, then you can continue to hold the meeting according to the procedure. Nikita Sevalodovich, do you agree? Nikita Sevalodovich, uh, please turn the microphone on. Yes, I, dear, dear members, dear members of the council, do you mind? No, we don't. Let us continue. 
to improve quality of communication. Dear colleagues, please s switch off your microphones, but don't forget to switch them on when you're given the floor. Thank you. Let me also inform you that our meeting is being recorded and broadcast online at St. Petersburg University website. The speeches are being simultaneously translated from Russian into English and or from English into Russian. The applicant's page currently displays an email address to which anyone can send questions to the applicant reg uh, uh, can send their opinions or send questions to the degree applicant online regarding his thesis and the ongoing scientific discussion. These questions shall be forwarded to me by our technical department and I shall read them out during the discussion. Questions should be related strictly to the applicant's presentation, the content of his thesis, and must include full name, position, and place of work of the author of the question. Questions that are not related to the scientific discussion, discussion of the thesis, to the text or evaluation of the thesis itself, should not be presented. In accordance with the order rewarding the degree of candidate or doctor of science at St. Petersburg University, approved by the local regulations of St. Petersburg University, a, meet, a session of the decision council is considered competent if at least two-thirds of the approved composition of the council, but not less than four persons, take part in its work. Our dissertation council consists of six members. All six are present in the remote interactive mode. All the visual contact has been established with them. Audiovisual contact has been established with all of them. Thus, we have the quorum. I instruct the creator of today's defense, Karasova Irina Vasilevna, officer of the Dissertation Council Support Department, to drop the attendance list in which the Dissertation Council members present shall be recorded and to indicate their work mode, in this case, remote. Let me set forth the procedure of today's session with the approximate duration of approximately two hours. The procedure shall be as follows. First, the chairman's summary report on the main content of documents submitted by the degree applicant and their compliance with the applicable regulations. Answers to possible questions, five minutes. Second, a brief presentation by the degree applicant outlining the key points of his study. Approximately 15 minutes. Questions to the applicant strictly on his report. No more than two minutes for each question. Four, answers of the applicant, maximum five minutes for all the questions. Five, speeches of all members of the Decision Council with their reviews, with, with their assessment of the thesis and presentation of the degree applicant, and summary of their opinions, questions and suggestions to the degree applicant. No more than 10 minutes for each speaker. Six, speech with the chairman and his review, approximately 10 minutes. Seven, answers of the applicant to questions and comments of members of the Decision Council. Eight, presentation by the chairman of questions to the applicant sent in the, during the discussion of his speech and the scientific discussion uh, while the session has been broadcast online at the Bettysburg University website. Nine, answers of the applicant, no more than two minutes per question. Ten, speech of the academic advisor of the applicant, no more than three minutes. Eleven, Dissertation Council member discussion of the results of the defense before the open voting, during which the broadcast sound shall be switched off approximately five minutes. Twelve, open individual voting. The chairman of the Dissertation Council shall count the votes and the results shall be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. Thirteen, a decision on awarding or not awarding uh, the St. Petersburg University academic degree to the applicant. 14, closing remarks of the applicant. No more than two minutes. Dear colleagues, do you have any questions or objections to this procedure? No, we don't. No questions. Well, okay with everybody. No questions. Uh, if they have no questions, let's start with our first item. Please remember to switch up your mobile phones. Uh, let, me, let us start the session. The floor is given to the academic advisor of Lagorev, Alexis Sergeyevich, Doctor of Philosophy, Professor 
of the Department of Social Philosophy at St. Petersburg University, Sokolov Alexei Mikhailovich. Alexei Mikhailovich, the floor is yours. Dear members of the Dissertation Council, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our doctoral student, Alexei Sergeyevich Lagurev, who, despite all the challenges he had to overcome, especially in the last year, due to various administrative challenges, uh, uh, is, uh, I think for me and also for Alexei Sergeyevich, uh, this is a great pleasure because Alexei Sergeyevich is a, is a brilliant student, a brilliant researcher. Uh, he became a doctoral student with a ready theme, which he explored uh, with focus and passion, and he, he, he inspired even me to some ideas in philosophy of history. And so he passed the uh, necessary training course as should be. So I recommend him as an excellent student and I hope his defense session will also go well and you will appreciate his work properly. Thank you uh, all members of the Dissertation Council for agreeing to join this uh, Dissertation Council and I wish to all of us uh, successful completion of the defense session. Thank you, Alexei Mikhailovich. Thank you for introducing Alexei Sergeyevich to us. You'll be given the floor again after the degree applicant makes his report and the uh, members of the council speak. So the, this is by Lagarev, Alexis Sergeyevich, for the degree of candidate of philosophical sciences, academic specialization 09-011, social philosophy on the theme, problematization of the philosophy of history in the works of Mikhail Lifshitz, was accepted for defense by the order of the academic secretary at St. Petersburg University, dated the 17th of April, 2020, order number 3186-1. Lagarev Sergeyevich wrote his thesis at St. Petersburg University, under the guidance of Doctor of Historical Sciences, Associate Professor of the Department of Russian History from ancient times to the 20th century at Petersburg University, Kotov, Eduard Alexandrovich, and Doctor of Philosophy Professor, Department of Social Philosophy at Petersburg University, Sokolov Alexei Mikhailovich. The number of the applicant's publications which set out the main scientific results of his thesis, according to the list presented, is three, in journals or from the list approved by the Ministry of Education and Science of the Russian Federation, three publications in journals indexed in the Web of Science and Scopus Scientometric Databases, in journals indexed in Web of Science and Scopus Science Databases, no publications. The applicant submitted to the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg University a full package of documents for acceptance of his thesis for consideration and defense, other documents comply with Article 12 of Section 3 of the order. All the documents submitted by the applicant, according to the information I received from the curator, comply with the requirements and are kept in the registration uh, file. The copies are available from the officer of the Dissertation Council Support Defender Curator of today's uh, session, Irina Vasilna Karasova, who is currently in touch with us. Before I give the floor to the degree applicant, do you, dear council members, have any general questions to the applicant, and is it necessary to disclose and review the entire list of documents submitted by the degree applicant? No. No, we have no questions. There are no questions. There are no questions. Thank you. Okay. Well, let me give the floor to the degree applicant, Lagrev Alexis Rugevich. The floor is yours. Good afternoon. Dear Chairman, dear members of the Station Council, uh, dear listeners, uh, let me uh, s introduce to you social philosophy, my thesis, 
uh, sub uh, submitted a problematization of the philosophy of history in the works of Mikhail Lifshitz. Uh, the system of Lifshitz and is in the works of Lifshitz as is, is, is a of methodological approaches reflected in history, a uh, part of his philosophical system. The general purpose of my research is to appeal to the philosophical system of Mikhail Lifshitz and to justify the possibility of an integral and independent Marxist philosophy of history as a translation of the problems of classical philosophy of history into the language of historical materialism. To achieve this goal, the following uh, tasks have been solved. In the course of my study, the methodological principle of conceptual reconstruction of philosophy of history of Lifshitz was revealed. Lifshitz, able to actualize the theoretical potential in the context of fundamental problems of the Marxist philosophy, the central position of the category of aesthetic as the basis for interpretation of the philosophy of history in the works of Lifshitz has been substantiated, identified significance of the theological problems in the context of the study of the category of aesthetic as the methodological approach to the problem of philosophy uh, of the history of Marxism. Uh, we considered the problem of historical practice in this connection with Marxist theory inflection is, on the basis of this the possibility of materialistic reading of the classical historiosophical problem of reasonableness of historical process in the context of Marxist understanding of historical practice as well as the dialectics of logical historical has been justified. In the course of my study, the connection between the ethical and the philosophical issues have been traced through the category of aesthetic. A conceptual reconstruction of the system of fundamental propositions of Lipschitz's philosophy of history has been made in the context of a uh, problem of spirit in the Marxist philosophy, as well as the theoretical potential of these propositions in the uh, uh, perspective of Marxist philosophy. The classical problem of the subject of the historical process has been viewed through the prism of the theory of cycles of Michael Lipschitz. The problem of tragic was investigated in the context of possibility of Marxist philosophy of history. Finally, the problem of social ideals considered as a point of transition from the problem of Marxist philosophy of history. We have to call a technical break. The chairman has gone missing. No, no, the chairman is here. Uh, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, let me... Shall I continue then? Yes, please. And... Final, that the problem of social ideal was considered as a point of transition from the Marxist philosophy to history to the problems of Marxist ethics. This research was based on the dialectical method formulated in the works of Mikhail Lifshitz in 1930s, and his circle that included Lukács, Satz, Usievich, Alexandrov, Grieb, and others, as well as the further development of this apparatus in the works of Arslanov, which allows combining the systematic and general consideration of the logical historical understanding of the research categories as well as the analytical and synthetic aspects of research in their dialectical unity. The main provision submitted for defense. First, the methodological approach to the philosophy of uh, Lifshitz's history, uh, considering in the context of the uh, form of relations with various thinkers and the philosophical system represents a promising and the most fruitful principle for conceptual reconstruction of philosophy of history of Lifshitz. The author is able to actualize the theoretical potential in the context of the uh, second a category of aesthetic, aes aesthetic point of view occupies the central position in the context of interpretation of philosophy of history in the works of Lifshitz. It's through the analysis and theoretical reconstruction of the problem of the aesthetic view of history formulated by Lifshitz that new ways can be found to justify the possibility of an integral and independent Marxist philosophy of history as a translation into the language of historical materialism of the problems of a classical philosophy of history. Research of the aesthetic point of view of Marxism formulated in the works of Michael Lifshitz discovers the need to consider questions of theology, the problem of goal setting, which in turn put forward the need for a comprehensive study of the problem of historical practice as the basis of the Marxist philosophy of history. Fourth, addressing the issues of historical practice allows for a fresh look at the uh, relation of freedom and necessity in the context of Marxist philosophy of history, which leads to a consideration of the problem of logical historical as a new formulation of classical historiographical, the question of reasonableness of the historical process. Five, 
the theory of cycles of lishes discovers the opportunity to repose the problem of the subject of the historical process as well as the problem of the tragic in history. A lot of the theory of identities formulated by Lifshitz opens the possibility of building a complete Marxist philosophy of history, taking into account all the achievements and discoveries made by the Marxist philosophy and in other subject areas, including ontology and the theory of knowledge. Referring to the category of aesthetic as the central category in the framework of the Marxist philosophy of history allows us to stray the dialectal connection between the ethical and the philosophical historical issues. The problem of objectivity of existence of a social ideal in history is the point at which the Marxist philosophy of history passes into the Marxist ethics. The scientific novelty of my research is in the fact that for the first time a conceptual reconstruction of the views of Lifshitz was carried out on the problems of the philosophy of history from the point of view of its significance for philosophy in its entirety. For this purpose, for the first time, such a significant range of sources was considered, including both published and yet unpublished works. For the first time, Lifshitz's theoretical views on the philosophy of history were studied, generalized, and systematized in the context of current philosophical problems. For the first time, their internal methodological and theoretical unity was shown, for the first time, some sources were introduced into scientific circulation. Finally, for the first time, significance of geological through the present was comprehensively demonstrated as one of the examples of applying dialectical method to the study of philosophical and historical issues, which contributes to the development of philosophy as a scientific discipline. The theoretical significance of research was uh, connected, first of all, with the possibility of substantiating an integral philosophy of uh, history with the framework of Marxism, understood as a translation of classical historiographical problems into the language of historical materialism. The methodological appeal to the philosophical system uh, was uh, based on the analysis of problematization in the works of the philosopher. At the same time, a conceptual reconstruction is also has a high theoretical potential since, for the first time, it recreates the philosophy of history of Michael Lifshitz. As an integral devo developed teaching, it actualizes many malicious discoveries that can help solve the fundamental historiographical problems. At the same time, the thesis has a high practical significance because, thanks to the presented conceptual reconstruction of the philosophy of history of Mihail Lifshitz as part of his philosophical so it can serve as an important source of practical research in the field related to the study of Marx's philosophy of history. The work consists of three chapters, an introduction, conclusion, and a list of references, including 104 sources, three of which are in foreign language. The total volume of work is 179 pages. The first chapter, The Problem of the Aesthetic in the Marxist Philosophy of History, examines the role of the aesthetic in its connection with the problems of philosophy of history, justifies the methodological principles and approaches to the consideration of this in, uh, in the context of philosophical system of literature and uh, uh, f forms the uh, circular problems. Uh, it is, is established that a form of dialect that considers the fundamental provisions of the philosophy of history of um, Michael Lipschitz in the context of their relationship with various ideas and thinkers, their correspondence, arguments, and co-creations, the most fruitful methodological approach that can reveal the theoretical potential of the content of Lipschitz's system at the same time, the category of the aesthetic occupies a central position in the context of the interpretation of the philosophy of history in the works of Michael Lipschitz. From the analysis of the category of aesthetic in the light of philosophical historical concepts, it follows the need to uh, consider the process of theology through a consistent appeal to the dialogue with Kant, Hegel, and Lukács. As a result, the category of the aesthetic reveals a special ontological angle of view that can reveal the problems of historical human practice in a new way. In the second chapter, and this uh, ethnozoology of, and the Marxist philosophy examines the central propositions of the system of Lipschitz in the context of their theoretical and the possibility of a fundamentally new formulation of the fundamental problems of the Marxist philosophy of history. In particular, the problem of historical practice considered in its connection with the Marxist theory of reflection in the interpretation appears as a process of activation of an object as a result of human activity based on the reflection of instantaneous objective charged with the uh, universality of the facts that can become a support for human consciousness. In term, it's established that the formulation of the problem in teleology proceeding from objectivation of activity of the subject, which gives an ontologically indifferent object, subjective properties, leads the philosophy of history to absolute contradictions. The author publishes a position according to which the historical practice understood as the awakening of subjective properties reveals a close connection with the problem of historical sanity 
and also allow us to raise the problem of reasonableness on, in a new level. In this context, we established that the basis of the historical process is a division uh, into bare facts that reflect only a small existence and uh, instances that are a mirror of a large being, the world as a whole. Thus, the presence of those instances in the fabric of the historical process means its internal reasonableness. Based on the reflection of universal, as a result, the problem of logical and historical considered in the light of analysis of the historical practice of man in the works of Lifshitz can be formulated as a problem of formulation logical sphere being uh, the information in the midst of, is of historical, of moments of generality which are concentrated in the instances, i.e. Uh, also logical. Through this division in history, it becomes possible to distinguish two types of necessity, analytical and synthetic. The analytical one is based on the direct empiricism of small being. The synthetic one is based on reasonable facts and instances. Thus, it turns out that despite the fact that the historical practice of man is determined by being, it's able to find the way to freedom through reliance and reason in history and the analytical necessity that turns into freedom. In turn, the analysis of the possibility of such a situation in the course of historical process leads to the fact that a focus on the problem of spirit. In the third chapter, social ideal, the aesthetic point of uh, Marxism, uh, by revealing the theory of Marx's theory, describe the problem of spirit as a unifying force as the logic of the movement of historical processes to its own completeness. Thus, Every phenomenon reaches a certain state in its development, closing on itself and thereby providing a stable form in its own constant, uh, which is, is, uh, forms a cycle. Such cycles are born in the course of historical process and represent a definite harmonious unity of the opposites, movement and immobility, development and stop. Uh, the theory of identities allows us to trace various forms of unity of historical opposites, serves as a logical basis for the analysis of the historical process. In turn, based on the theory, it becomes possible to establish that in case they develop other phenomena, we can find a complex style of logical and historical, the result of which can be a different unity of these historical poles. The harmonious unity is the formation of such historical form that will be able to acquire the property of mirroring and thus reflect the universal content of history, making it accessible to human consciousness. Uh, the unity is the formation of a vicious circle of history. Thus, the vicious circle of history gives rise to the problem of the tragic forming a situation when the tragically acting subject of historical process uh, was, was, uh, whatever path he chooses. However, by distinguishing between the tragic and the former logical error, it becomes possible to find uh, the way out of the vicious circle, which is still real, even though it's a historical tragedy. As follows that a tragic action is not in vain, the consciousness of God grows due to the existence of the mechanism of sad experience and the return of the unsolved problems. The result of this is a new historical cycle that opens up new possibilities for a freer, more harmonious unity of opposites. The general logic of historical movement considered in the context of the theory of cycles allows us to understand the historical process as the formation of cycle, a new cycle, the end of prehistory and the beginning of the real human history associated with the formation of the new forms of progress of human society and its development. The measure of this development is the ability to deal with the opposite consequences of their own actions. Thus, the Marxist philosophy of history passes into ethics. The results of my thesis have been presented in six articles in peer-reviewed scientific journals, including three publications uh, in the journals recommended by the Higher Distation Commission, Minister of Education, along with articles. The results of the thesis were presented in the framework of presentations at several conferences and also served as an important material for the scientific preparation for publication of translation of the autobiography of Gregory Lucas, within which was set a series of meetings with employees of Lucas Archive in Budapest, a famous Hungarian researcher of theological heritage uh, professor uh, in uh, Budapest University. The subject was the pro philosophical historical concept of a close friend of Gregory Lukács. The results of the thesis were used in preparing and conducting lecture and seminar with masters of the Institute of Philosophy at Petersburg State University studying under the program German Philosophy in March 2019. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Alexis Sergeyevich, uh, here for being so punctual. Exactly, it took exactly 15 minutes. And not, uh, thank you. Uh, questions to the degree applicant? 
regarding his report covering the main points of his thesis. Uh, do we have any questions? Do members of the Decision Council have any questions at this point? Alexander Ivanovich, may I ask Igor Dmitrievich? Yes, please. Alexei Sergeyevich, I'd like to clarify for myself. After I read your thesis and your report, uh, one critical question. Uh, as is known, the Marxist f history of uh, philosophy of history, my question is how does class uh, philosophy of classical Marxism uh, relate to the historical approach? What do you think? What is your opinion? Classical cl cl class distinction to the aesthetic. Uh, so that Thank you, Igor Dmitrievich, for your question. The matter is that I think the answer to this question lies in the center of the entire uh, work of Mikhail Lipschitz. It is no secret that in 1920s in USSR and also in Western Europe, many uh, uh, dif uh, so the different aspects of Marxism, of the Marxist philosophy, uh, Marxist aesthetics, as it was understood then, uh, which were based on strict division and uh, considering art from the class approach, the aesthetical in this uh, relation is practically uh, was because it was an equivalent to the class ideology reflected by uh, artists, uh, writers, uh, this matter. So Lifshitz and his circle started by defining the possibility of existence of such uh, uh, authentic aesthetics of Karl Marx that could explain, in addition to the all, always subjective, related to subjective views, new point of view, that would be uh, truth about art. For that, he uh, reverted to Marx and Engels' heritage about aesthetics, because before, in the works, for example, of Plekhanov and other researchers, they always looked at boring physical categories, the bourgeois sociology, such as Ipolitain. And so they, so Lifshitz in this respect, uh, he, uh, and so that's how class uh, approach. And in my opinion, uh, here we are dealing in with a great variety of self-focused subjective positions represented by bourgeois class, proletarians, etc., uh, not related to each other, or we are dealing here with some truth which can be represented regardless. Uh, uh, regardless this class approaches, but also due to them. And here, Lifshitz showed the possibility uh, of uh, such aesthetics. Here we may also remember a famous uh, discussion of Lenin with Bogdanov, where Bogdanov suggested that in all social sciences we can always talk about uh, class. Well, though the truth, the universal truth, is impossible. So the aesthetic point of view, in my opinion, means an attempt to find uh, the materialistic objective among such limited particular opinions. And so that is why uh, studying the philosophy of history of Marxism is, is understanding of discoveries made by Lifshitz, the discoveries of uh, uh, the opinion that enabled to cover all the particular opinions of, with some universal point of view of Marx. Thank you. Thank you. More questions? Do council members have more questions? 
Uh, Alexander Ivanovich, I have a question, please. Arefiev. Please go ahead. I have a, I have a question. Could you please answer the relation of Mikhail and Evelyenkov? What was the relationship between them? Uh, Mikhail Anatolievich, uh, this is quite the answer to this question may take a long time. But if uh, we stick to our time frame, Yenkov was a friend of Lifshitz during the entire post-war period. I, I'm not sure when exactly, I don't remember exactly when they met, but they were uh, close friends intellectually. And that means the most important works of Lifshitz, which cover his philosophical, disclose his philosophical system, is dedicated uh, uh, dialogue with Reinhard Rienkov, as continu who continued the best their best traditions developed uh, in 1930s. He called Ilienko, and so they co constant they constantly were in touch with each other. And but at the same time. Each of them had its own followers who were not identical. So the dialogues, in the dialogues, uh, he tried to differentiate where they were close, where were they agreed, and where they disagreed. He was a friend, and where their philosophical, their parts are different. So that's what, what their relationship was like. The uh, foreword. Uh, he wrote a foreword to Ilienka's last, uh, uh, last publication, which was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Alexis Sergeyevich, more questions to the applicant? I see uh, there are no questions. Then let us proceed to give the floor to the dissertation council members. And let me ask them. Since all the reviews have been published at the university website, I encourage you to focus on uh, critical remarks and uh, assessment of the thesis uh, in of the members of the Decision Council. Alexis Sergeyevich, uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, how would you prefer to answer questions and comments? Uh, of the members of the dissertation council after each speech or in the end uh, after all the council members uh, make their speeches. Uh, I would prefer to answer each speaker individually. Okay, thank you, but you remember how much time you have uh, to answer the questions. Okay, now let me let me inform you or maybe you know that the dissertation council uh, received two external uh, reviews uh, from uh, Arslanov, senior researcher uh, of, of from Popov, Mikhail Vasilievich, uh, professor consultant of the Department of Social Philosophy and Philosophy of History of the Institute of Philosophy of St. Petersburg University. Uh, since all the reviews were published at the university website, I suggest I will read only the key points and uh, remarks. Uh, do council members have any objections to that? Okay. Then, with your permission, let me read a review of, of Viktor Grigorievich Arslanov and then of uh, Mikhail Vasilovich Popov. Uh, of course, uh, the, is, uh, the assessment is very positive. Uh, assessment of Alexis Sergeyevich's uh, work, and in conclusion, uh, Viktor Grigorovich asks a number of asked a number of questions. Let me read it. In this connection, I would like to ask a number of questions, which can point to the direction direction of future research. For example, such a very worth this question, what is fascism 
and what is the main uh, different uh, fascism in Lifshitz from the established ones in Soviet Russia? The, uh, it's, uh, the essence of fascism and another question of a more general uh, character. Mikhail Lifshitz criticized not only idealistic uh, theosophy of Hegel, but also important amendments of materialistic uh, um, Lifshitz noted that development of capitalism submitted in the capital can create false impression like the future of capitalism is related only with him, so to speak. Uh, so he goes to the next phase of human development exclusively under the influence of force of negation uh, in, in the capitalist world itself. However, uh, any uh, because it's in diverse relations with the infinite. And so Lifshitz uh, wrote about the loan from infinity, which is impossible to imagine the essence. Intervention of this external one in the world may absolutely be absolutely unexpected, unpredictable, perceived as purely natural disaster. However, according to Lifshitz, these are extremely impacts of, uh, so important. It's not possible without them being correctly understood the internal public life of the organism. Subject of coronavirus makes these ideas of Michael Lifshitz extremely up to date. It should be noted that it, this is similar uh, to claims against the Marxist dialects in uh, Socialist Party revolutions, uh, represented of the Frankfurt School, first of all, of Marcuse Adorno. Uh, in uh, this is represented by from the uh, picture of dialectics presented by the Frankfurt School of Social Network Philosophy. So this was the first question. And let me also read the uh, review by Mikhail Vasilovich Popov. Here uh, there are no critical commas. The review is positive. And the author says that the work uh, conducted by the degree applicant uh, is uh, and the degree applicant deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philosophical sciences uh, in social philosophy. Uh, Alexei Sergeyevich, will you take the questions right now? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Viktor Vigorovich and uh, Mikhail Vasilovich. Uh, speaking of uh, fascism, uh, questions is uh, the issue of fascism is one of the most important issues in his the, the philosophy of history and uh, I sh but because I didn't have enough so I will uh, try to do it now. According to the established interpretation of totalitarianism the foundations of the fascist state are rooted in the uh, automized individual accessible to propaganda and domination of totalitarian ideology. The fascist state appears to be a complete antithesis of uh, bourgeois democracy. In this tension, Lifshitz sees the most important feature of fascism, its dependence and internal connection with liberal democracy, on the negation of which on the, uh, its political line is built. Uh, both the dictatorship of the bourgeois in the, uh, and the form of the dictatorship plays a crucial role. To understand this, it's necessary to recall two very important ideas from the history of Marxist thought. The first is Lenin's idea of anarchism as inverted bourgeoisie. The second is Marxism of the two sides bourgeois society from the 18th Brume. The fascist repulsion from liberalism uh, is the development of one side of the bourgeois society as the, uh, and undesirable as expense of the facade. The idea was developed by Lifshitz since the first half of the uh, 1930s. The most important place is occupied by the work of Winkelmann, in which he formulates the concept of three epochs. If the first era associated with ideas of the French Revolution was uh, from France, the bourgeois ideology, in 1848, we are talking about entering the historical stage of its own side. However, the most important in this context is, of the analysis is the third epoch, the epoch of, of new type of reaction connected with the idea in the spirit of revolution on the right. The combination of order and revolt, conservatism, turns out to be a further development of bourgeois ideology, but in the form of reverse movement, in the form of reaction and self-denial. In this connection, Lipschitz uh, differs from traditional understanding of totalitarianism, referring to Lenin, who saw in the black hundreds the rise of the deepest, but also the darkest democracy. Lipschitz shares 
uh, the conservative tradition, the same mass atomized man, and the reviewed conservatism of reaction. Racism, therefore, appears here as a surrogate for equalization. That is why he defines fascism as a black cloak with a red lining. We are not talking about the domination of uh, manipulators over the human herd, but about a much more serious historical phenomenon, the rise of dark democracy and its connection with amagardism, the overall bourgeois culture of decline. Uh, for, for he mentions Heidegger, fascism, according to Lifshitz, in, uh, appears during the period of the democratic ascent in its surrogate and succeeds as a result of direct democratic energy that is impossible for one reason or another. At the same time, the concept of territory is essentially an ideological desire to return to the facade of the bourgeois society. And uh, that is why Lifshitz also calls it petit bourgeois criticism of fascism. As for the second question uh, about the Frankfurt School, and indeed, the uh, Marcuse assumed that proletariat being fully integrated in the capitalist system is not capable of becoming a revolutionary subject in a developed industrial society. At the same time, such a subject can be something that was rejected by the capitalist society, something that was uh, on the margins of the system, sexual and ethnic minorities, rebellious students of 68, etc. However, in my opinion, uh, social process of Michael is radically different from this concept. The fact is that according to Lifshitz, all these movements are not outside but also inside the capitalist system and act as its own negative portrait. In this sense, this issue is closely in, uh, connected with the previous one. Protesting lumpens, rioting students, uh, LGBT movement represent only an inside-out bourgeois society. It's denial of its own basis. That inside is opposed to the facade, which in fact only contributes to its strengthening. Thus, Lifshitz wrote about modernism as an integrated rebellion. But where then can we look for something that actually allows to go beyond the vicious circle of conditions that have formed a certain circle of self-reproduction? It's necessary to make the same loan from the infinity, turn to reality itself, find reliable points of support, and thus move with the matter from the dead point. Thank you, Alexei Sergeyevich. Now let us proceed to the reviews of the dissertation council members. And uh, I suggest the following order. Uh, Vladimir Mikhailovich, Nikita Selich, Igor Dmitrovich, Arefiev, Mikhail Anatolovich, uh, Daniel Alexander Nikolaevich, and myself. I shall uh, be the last one on this list. Let me give the floor to Kamni Vladimir Mikhailovich. Vladimir Mikhailovich. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Alexander Ivanovich. Can you can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, dear Chairman of the Dissertation Council, dear members of the Dissertation Council, it is no secret that today not only philosophers but also all humanitarian sciences experience uh, 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 are in a crisis. This in turn reflects the crisis state of the modern society as a whole. On the one other hand, the situation in which the Marcus theory has found itself in the past two years is probably no accident either. Both dogmatization of Marxism and its principal re revision indicate a rejection of it, precisely because Marxism itself initially asserted itself as a form of radical attitude to reality. None of the current social theories approaches on the scale of formulated tasks that was available to Marxism. The state in which humanity finds itself the high degree of probability promises that the return of Marxism to ac the academic science is inevitable. Uh, the more gratifying is the, uh, is the thesis dedicated to one of the most remarkable figures in Soviet Marxism, Mikhail Alexandrovich Lifshitz. And the works of this thinker can really serve as a connective tissue of the past, present, and the future. When reading Alexei uh, Lagrov's uh, thesis from the first pages, it becomes obvious that the intellectual enthusiasm of the author is supported by exceptional research integrity. The detailed methodology of the work could well be presented in a separate article. It's remarkable that when working on the works of Arslanov as the methodological reference point, he reveals not only their affinity with the problems that interest him, but also finds his own field of activity for development of the previously obtained results. In addition, in this introductory part of the thesis, very valuable methodological alternative to postmodernism, existentialism, and avant-gardeism as the directions of world thought and culture of the 20th century as a whole. Such focus allows the author to reform the historical and philosophical material of social and philosophical methodologies. The structure of the thesis is well thought out. 
The table of contents, the order of chapters and paragraphs clearly show the logic of the research and its semantic orientation, uh, clearly expressed in its goals and objectives. The first chapter of the thesis, the problem of the aesthetic and of Marxist theory, begins with a paragraph in which the thesis about dialogue as the elementary foundation of the ontognosiology is put forward. Here, the author articulates in his own way the in intuition that the true content of existence is revealed in the tension of the spiritual and intellectual interaction between the thinking people, and history becomes the uh, predmet that covers and holds the entire content of human existence. On this basis, Lagorov quite rightly points out that the dialogue with Kant and Hegel, Marx and Engels, Lenin and Lukács uh, is uh, revealed uh, incomplete and unwritten history of Mikhail Alexander's literature, a special way of problematizing it. In the next two paragraphs, the author proceeds directly to the analysis of the value orientations and the methodological basis of Lifshitz's uh, views, justifying the thesis that since the open on Lifshitz's original aesthetics of Marx and Engels and then Lenin originates in a fundamentally new understanding not only of the aesthetic field itself but also of the Marxist philosophy in general, including the Marxist philosophy of history. He skillfully builds the historical material through the reconstruction of the possible dialogue between Kant, Hegel, Lenin and others. Uh, the academic pathos of the author is consonant with the materialistic uh, interpretation of Lifshitz or the aesthetic in the system of philosophical law. On page 31, we read, the complex unity covers completely not only the aesthetics proper, ethics, social philosophy, or politics, but also the ontology and the theory of knowledge. And here he concludes, the center of this complex structure is invariably wild history. Reconstruction of uh, actualization of Hegelian understanding of history is extremely interesting and remarkable in the way the degree applicant presented it. This clearly refers to the modern history, once again underlying the mythological and, and axiological significance of research. The philosophy of history, the problem it faces, and the solutions appear um, something that can answer the questions of today, suggest certain possibilities, and illuminate situations that are uh, kind of in a new way, Lagorev, as it were, leads us to the idea that even today we are in the element of revolutionary changes, still remain in the rational form of consciousness, and we still have to discover those real links that would allow us to move from abstractions to something more concrete, paving the way for a different synthesis of historical opposites more favorable to men. The second chapter of the thesis uh, ethnozoology of Michael Lipschitz and the Marxist philosophy is devoted to consideration of how a fundamentally new Marxist philosophy of Hegel, Lukács, and Lipschitz uh, emerged. The very title of the chapter successfully conveys the specific concept, interpretation of the human activity as a principle of the world order and the form of its knowledge. Considering the chronological sequence of formation of categories of activity, labor, and practice presented in the teachings of Hegel and Marx, uh, creatively interpreted by Lucas, the applicant demonstrates not only a good knowledge of the material, but also a deep understanding of it. In this free attitude to literature of the classics that allows Lagreff to identify very precisely the idea of Lifshitz, which expresses the essence of his ontognosiology. Work for him is not just an objectification of human activity. It's primarily the activation of the object. In other words, we're talking about identifying the essence of the object, which becomes a theme that tells our consciousness about its true essence. We are talking about work as a concrete form of human activity that confirms reality in its total realization, this is truth. It's clear that this point of, of view allows us to see the convergence of the uh, ontological and epistemological elements held in unity by practice, which acts criterion. On page 80 of the thesis, the author writes, an object that comes out of the passive state gains its voice through the practical questioning gives birth to a completely new content, which could not have been born either as a result of the independent, isolated existence of the object or as a result of the action of the subject produced exclusively from itself. In the paragraph, The Problem of Reason in History in the Context of Dialectics of the Logical and Historical, Lagreff develops this plot, analyzing how Lifshitz interprets the transition of a historical content to the logical. How does history create itself? In fact, for the materialistic understanding of the order of existence, it's extremely important that a sphere of logical def definitions is generated by the totality of human activity, which forms cares of being into, um, 
the order of human universe, hence the possibility of the new understanding of the problem of freedom and necessity, which is quite rightly noted on page 87. Hence, a kind of a historical imperative, rise of single empirical subject to a state of perfect citizenship. In the first paragraph of the final chapter, Marx's philosophy of history and the problem of spirit, the author uh, uh, of the problem of correlation of freedom and necessity is quite logically developed in its perspective of the historical materialistic interpretation of Hegelian's spirit, or rather the human spirit, which represents the miracle of history, the form of the world which exceeds in its moral aspiration, natural conditioning. History reveals itself through creative redundancy generating something that should not have happened, for which there seemed to be no reason. And therefore, the objective reasonableness of the historical process breaks out due to the historical practice of humanity. In the next two paragraphs, Lagorev enters into the problem of the emergence of the subject of history as, as a miraculous event, an event in which a certain cycle of being becomes complete, a moment of identity with itself occurs, and the object enters the cycle of itself, production, gaining the ability to act on its own. This is probably the most interesting and significant part of the thesis. The aesthetic understanding of history is interpreted here in the categories of strategy, error, sad existence, in all, all well-being of the rational mind avoids. The only tragedy it raises in history opens up new horizons that are unknown to a person who acts only within the framework of the known and well-tested. Further on, in moments of historical tragedy, the sad experience of humanity is enriched the abstract goals and aspirations are fulfilled, resulting in growing social consciousness, shifting the point of the next beginning a little closer to the goal. And here we might speak not of an instinct born of the heroic action, but about the true substance of history, which is not measured with any previous content, but itself measures and judges it, actualizing the dawning public consciousness, new ideals that attract people to the new goals and invite them into a single whole. The last intention is developed in the final paragraph of the thesis. It's remarkable that the author, summing up the research, brings together all the multidimensional material as if emphasizing the uh, mirroring true consciousness, generalizing, systematizing the updated order of existence, and thereby clarifying the direction of development. A completely new society as a high ideal is not only the result not only the true beginning of the human history, but also the most actual form of existence, actualized by the public consciousness and moving humanity forward in its free development. The thesis by uh, Lagreff has been performed at a high professional level. The author makes excellent use of historical, philosophical, and artistic material, skillfully brings it into the space of social philosophical knowledge, has great general theoretical and theological significance. And as an academic polemic, I would like to ask the applicant a few questions. First, uh, the limitative of your research is the reconstruction of Michael Lifshitz's philosophy of history in its aesthetic understanding, aesthetic understanding of history. You convincingly demonstrate the connection between the ideas of the Soviet philosopher and the Western tradition. Meanwhile, the aesthetic understanding of history, which took place in the Russian non-Marxist tradition, how do you assess the attitude of Michael Lifshitz to the aesthetic understanding of history by Konstantin Leodyev and uh, 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 Lozanov? Your thesis is executed in the spirit of Marxism. It is dedicated to the philosophy of history which you have reconstructed by referring to the legacy of one of the most remarkable Soviet markets. One of your paragraphs is directly devoted to the problem of historical subject, but in the text, you don't doesn't come across the concept of proletariat, working class, or class consciousness. How can this be explained? And third, file on page 128, you write uh, the mistakes about the giants without which humanity could have achieved much more. For example, the priceless historical experience of building socialism. And just below, in the following paragraph, you write about the revival of uh, Asiaticism, allegedly won by socialism uh, under Stalin. In your opinion, it turns the price of existence of uh, socialism in the US was a Asiatic. Is that true? And if yes, in what sense? Regardless of the answers, I believe that the thesis by Alexis Sergeyevich Lagrev on the uh, problematization of the philosophy of history in the works of Mikhail Lifshitz corresponds to the main requirements established by the order of 1st of September 2016, number 6821-1, on the procedure for awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University, and the degree applicant Alexei Lagrev deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philosophical sciences, spe academic specialization 0999 and 0011 and social philosophy. I, uh, ethical level has not been violated. Uh, I'm done, thank you. 
thank you, Vladimir Mikhailovich. Uh, let me give the floor to Alexis Sergeyevich to answer questions and comments by uh, Alexei Ivanovich. Uh, thank you, Vladimir Mikhailovich, for your questions. Uh, let me answer them. As for your first question, I believe it's important uh, to uh, trace any uh, connection with the ideas of Leontiev and Rosanov. From Lipsch's point of view, these thinkers were not among those who called the great conservatives of humanity in the sense of preserving the best of what was won by the world culture, protecting this uh, conquest from encroachments by cruel and stupid reaction from profanation of bourgeois, uh, the bourgeois system of life. Is, uh, at the same time, in the works of Lifshitz, we may find mention both of Rosen of Leontiev. In particular, Lifshitz usually writes about Leontiev in the context of his that Russia should be frozen so that it does not deteriorate in a Western European way. Which, thus, according to Lifshitz, Leontiev put forward the Eastern ideal as a special original opposition to the West, uh, which uh, he mentions in his lectures on Russian culture and its global significance. Rosenov was described as a reactionary sophist, as this is Gribayedov's, uh, but nevertheless assessed his book on Dostoevsky as uh, sharply hostile to Marxism, but not devoid of interest in the article Vulgar Sociology. As for the second question, here indeed the question of the modern proletariat as a revolutionary subject is one of the most difficult questions for the Marxist social theory as evidenced by the countless works written on this topic over the past 60 years, dealing with both the proletariat of the West and the vast proletarian masses of the East. Nevertheless, in my work, we were always talking not just about the problem of socialist revolution and the communist society, but about the proletarian socialist revolution. In this sense, my work undoubtedly requires further development in the direction of discovery in those intermediary links that will allow us to analyze the position of proletariat in the revolutionaries as a revolutionary subject. And finally, in my opinion, the post-revolutionary development of the Soviet Union has indeed revealed elements of revival Asiaticism, which in turn does not devalue the Soviet experience of building socialism. We are talking here about a very complex historical phenomenon which can only be understood in its entirety and therefore in all contradictions by learning the lessons and theoretical achievements that were formulated by the Soviet Marxism in person of Michael Lish in the, uh, during the 1930s. In his early report of 1927, Lish noted that Marx is writing an easy but uh, not accidental analogy between the first class civilizations in Asia and modern in the capitalist societies that the process of reviving certain forms of the past took place but on a new historical basis. The process was particularly acute in Russia, where, according to Lifshitz, already dates back to Lenin, the old feudal oppression was merging with a new capitalist one. Nevertheless, this unique situation opened the possibility for another synthesis of historical opposites, the, not the new feudal oppression, uh, but archaic peasant democracy and the highest achievements of the human culture. It was out of this complex historical dialectic that October Revolution was born. In this regard, I would like to refer to the works by Arslanov, for example, to his recent work on Andrei Platonov, as well as to his wonderful book, Existence and Nothing, where the ideas of Lipschitz get further development, revealing to us the post-revolutionary history of the Soviet Union. If we talk about this briefly, then according to the theory of uh, Lipschitz, which I mentioned in my thesis, there are various various of the synthesis of opposites. It can be symphonic, or it can be cacophonic. In relation to the history of USSR, as Arslanov writes, the symphonic synthesis of archaism and civilization gave rise to the October Revolution, gradually developed into the cacophonic synthesis that gave rise to the phenomenon of Stalinism. The T bourgeois peasant element, Lenin called it precisely that, is created the tragedy, uh, created the tragedy of Russian Revolution, a tragedy, not a simple mistake. Revival of Asiaticism in the USSR is precisely a historical tragedy, and the tragic hero um, must undoubtedly be guilty. And guilty for real, not just make believe. In this regard, we can recall the Christian theologians who proved that God really died on the cross about this story in the context of philosophy of history. Of, um, Grzegorz Aslanov wrote very well in his uh, book on theory. 
Nevertheless, this guilt being a tragic part and not a formal logical one brings the correct solution of the historical problem closer than any correct and soberly calculated but small, partial, half-hearted solutions of more sober minds, which I write in my work in the corresponding chapter. Thus, the dialectical philosophy of history revealed by the aesthetic point allows us to maintain the theoretical tension of these two seemingly opposite statements. On the one hand, revival of atheism, on the other, process experience of building socialism, only if open to the possibility of understanding how, not only, uh, but partly thanks to it, the still real movement towards socialism in USSR. I think it would be superfluous to point out the work of Lipschitz, which is very important for this topic, dedicated to One Day of Ivan Denisovich by Solzhenitsyn. Uh, are you done? Yes. Uh, thank you for your answers. Uh, let us give the floor uh, to Kuznetsov Nikita Vsevolodovich with his and his review. Nikita Vsevolodovich, can you, see, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Uh, dear Chairman of the Dissertation Council, since the review has been published at the university website uh, for uh, review in my speech I shall focus uh, I support all the uh, positive points uh, mentioned in my review and mentioned by Vladimir Mikhailovich Kamenev as well I will focus only on the critical comments uh, which I have and I mentioned these are like suggestions for the future Uh, rather than serious criticism. So here they are. And the study by Alexei Sergeyevich Lagurev is closely connected uh, with the work of Arslanov and when answering questions by Vladimir Mikhailovich, he mentioned uh, Arslanov uh, many times who wrote Uh, uh, sent a positive uh, review to the thesis in the works uh, in the work we, we find some quotes several reference yet uh, I think the work would have benefited even more if the, these works uh, were used more efficiently, for example, the problem of practice, chapter two, uh, paragraph problem of social ideal, chapter three, paragraph four, <coughs> uh, wider use of uh, Monroslav's uh, monograph on Platonov, his classical works on postmodernism. I think this would enrich the work Uh, of Alexei Sergeyevich. <laughs> It's also worth noting, this is my second comment uh, in my review, if the dialogue between Lipschitz and the classics of the philosophical thought, uh, modern theoreticians took part in his work, he mentions Zizek, uh, but only in, in, a, in the footnote Meanwhile, a similar example can be seen, for example, in the works of American Marxist philosopher Jameson, uh, Italian researcher, uh, uh, and, but in the context of existing uh, philosophical classics, it's obvious, it's not in uh, Fichte and Schilling. Consideration, uh, transition from Kant's system to Hegel's Uh, Fichte and Schelling's transition uh, would be more specific and it would be appropriate to use the works of Schiller to which the author seems to hint but does not implement. On page 44, a similar comment, uh, Lagorev writes, uh, thus today trying to reconstruct the main points of problematization 
of the philosopher of history of Mikhail Lifshitz, it's essential to keep in mind that all the literature of the current, because the ideas discussed here often become property of other thinkers, philosophers, and literary critics, the circle of the current of the 1930s, and as a result, were developed in the works of different thinkers. It would be much more productive if in this study, in addition to Lukács, they also uh, mentioned those thinkers who uh, he apparently decided to limit himself to keeping in mind. Same, can, uh, same applies about the discussion of the theme in spite of and thanks to on page 95 as one of the key themes of the current. And finally, there's a lack of reference to specific historical reality especially in the period after 1917. The range of examples of the thesis remains sufficient, rather limited to the classical field of the great French Revolution, the Revolution of 1848, the Paris Commune, and the events of the Russian revolutions of 1905 and 1917. Yes, this material undoubtedly belongs to the most uh, well-studied field of the Marxist philosophical tradition. Uh, many great number of excellent works is devoted to this period. However, given the general orientation of the thesis of Alexis Sergeyevich Lagrev, it would be interesting to go beyond these and uh, perform something new. The above remarks, however, should not affect the high assessment of uh, uh, Alexis Sergeyevich Lagorev's thesis, which is an original study and makes a significant contribution to the development of the problems of social philosophy and has the necessary uh, features of scientific novelty. Thus, it follows that the thesis by Lagorev Alexis Sergeyevich on the theme, problematization of the philosophy of history in the works of Mikhail Lipschitz corresponds to the basic requirements established by the order of the 1st of September 2016, 68, 21-1 on the procedure for awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant, Lagorev Alexis Sergeyevich, deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philosophical sciences, specialization 090011, social philosophy. Article 11 of this above mentioned order has not been violated by the author. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nikita Sevaldovich. Alexei Sergeyevich, please answer. Uh, comments and suggestions made by thank you Nikita Sevaldovich uh, for your critical remarks I fully agree with all your comments especially with the need to use the works of Schiller as well as Fichte and Schelling I, so I hope to develop in the future in my future work uh, to develop the uh, that you mentioned uh, Thank you very much, Alexis Sergeyevich. Thank you. Uh, now, let me give the floor uh, to uh, Osipov Igor Dmitrievich, uh, dear chairman, dear members of the dissertation council. As preceding, as, as my colleagues, I shall uh, use the uh, uh, as an excuse that the, my review has been published, uh, the thesis by Alexei Sergeyevich. First of all, I'd like to emphasize that the thesis is dedicated to uh, actual and complex scientific, the purpose of, is to study the work of the largest specialist in the field of aesthetics and philosophy culture, the creator of the concept of Marxist ontognosiology, academician Mikhail Lifshitz, its theoretical legacy, includes over 120 works in Russian 
and over 60 works published in foreign languages, as well as rich archival materials, is currently being re 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 put into scientific circulation, made available to scientists and read the reading public. Russian philosophy last year has been a lot of publications that explore the philosophy of culture. At the same time, the intellectual heritage of the philosopher has not yet been properly studied and requires a comprehensive analysis. Much of this applies to the philosophy of history, which has not yet been the subject of a specific study, although many works of Mikhail Lifshitz are an example of deep historical and philosophical analysis of various social problems. The thesis of Lagre, for the first time, uh, the problematization of philosophy of history is carried out in, as a set of methodological approaches, problems, and complexes of solutions that found their conceptual embodiment in the philosophy of history of Lipschitz as part of his philosophical system. One of the principal tasks facing the thesis is the theoretical substantiation of the integral and original Marxist philosophy of history by Lipschitz, which originates in the dialect of historical materialism. The work is based on a detailed study of works by Lipschitz, some of which are investigated for the first time, the writings of Kant, Hegel, Marx, Engels, Lenin, Herzen, Lekhanov, Lukács, works of the modern Russian and foreign scholars on the topic of thesis. The methodology of the work is based on the dialectical method, the use of logical and historical analysis, reconstruction of the philosophical ideas in the context of social, cultural, and political aspects of their uh, genesis and evolution. And the thesis consists of, it in, uh, enables to study the, give a comprehensive study of the material, main provisions. The first chapter is dedicated to the study of problem aesthetic in Marxist philosophy of history. Based on detailed analysis of the works of Lipschitz, devoted to the Marx, Engels, Lenin, and the philosophy of uh, the categories of freedom, justice, in Kant's metaphysics, reveals the features of philosophy of history of Marxism as a continuation of the historical materialism, Lifshit translates the problems of classical philosophy of history into the language of materials. The dissertation reveals close connection between the aesthetic, ethical, and political in Lifshit's philosophy of history and draws attention to the fact that the understanding the, uh, s uh, was, uh, reveals conceptual foundations of philosophy of Marxism from new perspective, pays attention to that understanding of unity, of uh, historical relevance. Uh, uh, this methodology is connected with ideas and the history of culture uh, from the uh, uh, conceptual second half of the 20th century. In the second, uh, in the second chapter, the subject examines uh, dialectic uh, of Lifshitz, a Marxist philosophy, historical practice, and the Marxist theory of reflection. Igor Dmitrievich, we can, uh, the um, issue of reason, as a as, as prerequisite instance, self reflection, analytic, and synthetic necessity, etc. A valuable aspect of, our, of the work is in-depth analysis of the structure of the study consciousness. Uh, the study uh, allows to better understand the fundamental position and theoretical content of Lipschitz materialistic. And, that, and the third chapter examines the social ideal and the aesthetic point of view, analyzes categories of spirit, freedom, necessity, and justice. The subject of history in the context of the theory of historical cycles and the problem of the triangle of particular is the uh, polemic between Lifshitz and Ilinkov on the problem of the social ideal, which reveals the specific affirmation of uh, Lifshitz and, uh, in, and is quite interesting. Uh, it shows, was mentioned already, which demonstrates uh, the affirmation of Lifshitz's uh, ontognosiology, its development, the humanistic Marxism in USSR. The conclusions of the physicist clarify the current understanding of the development of the Soviet philosophy of the second half of the 20th century and draw attention to the complex issue of transformation of the philosophy of classical Marxism, the formation of conceptual and philosophical assumptions of neo-Marxism and post-Marxism. Thus, all the goals of the thesis have been achieved and the 
main pro uh, provisions submitted for defense have been confirmed by the entire course of the research. However, some, I would like to make some comments. First, uh, the, on the page 168, the transition of philosophy of history of Marxism raises question from one can draw an ambiguous conclusion about the completion of the development of philosophy history. This phrase does not specify the content of the ethics which, according to the thesis, passes the philosophy of history of Marxism. And uh, second, so each is, uh, the category of miracle. Uh, on page 97, the author writes that the October Revolution is an example of historical miracle referring to Lipschitz, who, in the article The Moral Significance of the October Revolution, essentially reproduces the words of Lenin. Uh, however, Lenin wrote there about the difference between the scientific approach which takes into account the objective factors of the religion and the Philistine point of view which proceeds from the miracle in understanding the origins of the Federal Revolution. Uh, the uh, opinion uh, is reflected in, for example, we did not see, I was, was not convinced by the examples given by the author. Uh, that a uh, miracle. So these comments uh, do not affect uh, the overall positive uh, impression. The thesis is an independent study uh, which makes a significant contribution. It has uh, all features of uh, scientific novelty. It's, it's, it's addresses an uh, important uh, issue, the practical significance, the theoretical provisions. The thesis also has practical significance. Its main provisions and conclusions can be used in repelling of lectures and seminars on philosophy, history, and cultural studies. That thus, the uh, thesis uh, on the dramatization of the philosophy of history in the works of Mikhail Lipschitz corresponds to the basic requirements established by the order of the 1st of September on the order of awarding academic degrees in the Petersburg University. And the degree applicant, Dr. Rivalek Sergei, deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philosophical sciences, specialization 090011, social philosophy. Article 11 of the specified order has not been violated by the author. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Igor Dmitrievich. Let us give the floor uh, to Alexei Sergeyevich. Let him answer your questions. Uh, thank you, Igor Dmitrievich, uh, for your questions. And I shall ask. As for your first question, well, indeed, in my work, and especially in this phrase, the contents of the ethical teaching of Maxim is not specified or disclosed in any way. This was done as the problem of the Marxist eth ethics obviously goes beyond the scope of my study devoted to the Marxist philosophy of history. Under the transition of the philosophy of Marx, Marxism in ethics in the context of uh, is dictated by the inner logic of development of the content, the transition of the subject uh, in the subject area of ethics, I found by reference to problematization of the philosophy of history uh, of Michael Lifshitz. Does that mean the philosophy of Marxist theory is coming to an end? Both yes and no. The Marxist philosophy of history undoubtedly opens up an inexhaustible space for further movement. However, as uh, Lipschitz himself noted after Hegel, the abstract movement is identical with abstract rest. And in this sense, as part of my study, I have tried to discover those framework, fundamental structures of the Marxist philosophy of history that actually acquire completeness. And let me proceed to a second question regarding the historical miracle. I'd like to say that the problem of historical miracle is considered in my work on page 96, uh, 100. In particular, pages 99, 100 contains several excerpts from Lenin's speeches after the October period, in which he refers specifically to the concept of miracle. Uh, how do I combine the correct from my first statement of Mikhail Lifshitz about the revolution as a historical miracle and Igor Dmitrievich's perfectly fair remark uh, from the work, Letters from Afar? I believe that in 
my work and in Lifshitz's text and in Lenny's article, we are talking about the same thing, a materialistic leading of such a concept as miracle. Uh, the discovery of those real material foundations that lie become the foundation of the historical phenomenon that is presented uh, to uh, common citizens as miracle in the text of the thesis. This concept is considered by referring to the idea of Lifshitz on the distinction between the large and the small bane, as well as his concept of a materialistic reading of the concept of spirit, coming in turn from the same works of, of Lenin. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alexis Sergeyevich. I'd like to give the floor to Arefiev Mikhail Anatolievich. Uh, can you hear us? Uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Dear colleagues, uh, let me focus on two points of my review since it has been published earlier. Uh, this work, I think, is an interdisciplinary uh, social philosophy, a history of uh, philosophy, and uh, s uh, theoretical sociology, ph philosophy of history based on the idea of the great conservativeness of humanity uh, is a real alternative to postmodernism and existentialism, avant-gardeism in the direction of world through the culture of the 20th century. Therefore, the materials of paragraph 1-1, dialogue as a principle of philosophical reconstruction and a problem of the social idealist Marxist philosophy uh, and Marxist philosophy. Uh, the relevance is due to the attention paid to modern philosophical literature to the most important sociocultural problem of the dialogue of cultures and civilizations, as well as the question of significance of the ideal built in the theory of social and cultural development. Uh, the choice, the topic corresponds uh, to um, social philosophy. The social philosophy is, uh, is, is a philosophical reflection, the main stages of development of the social philosophical thought, the modern concepts of society as the organization form of a joint activity of people, etc. The work is independent, is original. Uh, that, is, that is my, let me proceed to some critical remarks uh, which I found first. There's a number of uh, orthographical, it's, uh, for example, it's page 19, the name of the work, uh, Lifshitz, is incorrect. Uh, uh, second, so this uh, second, uh, incom the uh, use is incomplete. Work of uh, sent is, uh, those modern publications uh, by uh, for example, article of Kamenev's uh, article on Lifshitz and Lukacs in uh, framework uh, RFBR as uh, published in uh, 2018, where it is emphasized that Lifshitz's ideas were called conservative revolution or a return to the classics and realism. Uh, these comments do not reduce the overall highest uh, impression of the thesis, which is a complete scientific study dedicated to a significant uh, and relevant problem. The thesis by Alexis Sergeyevich Lagreff, Promotization of the Philosophy of History in the Works of Mikhail Lifshitz, meets the basic requirements established by the order on the, of the 1st of September 2016, 68-21-1, on the procedure for awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant, Alexis Sergeyevich Lagreff, deserves to be awarded the degree of uh, Candidate of Philosophical Sciences. Uh, social philosophy. Uh, Article 11 of the specified order has not been violated by the author. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you. Mikhail Anatolovich, will you please answer questions and comments? Uh, thank you, Mikhail Anatolovich, for your comments. Uh, with, the first, with your first comment, I have to agree because indeed the text contains a certain number of uh, misprints uh, as I uh, found uh, himself had the opportunity to see while preparing for the defense. As for your second comment, I also agree 
Of course, taking into account the widest possible range of scientific literature can not by benefit absolutely any work. And in this sense, the text of the participants of the RFBR grant should also be taken into account, specialists and also participated in this grant. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alexis Sergeyevich. Let me give the floor to Alexander Nikolaevich Danilov uh, and his review. Thank you, dear colleagues. So first, at first, I'd like to warn you that since our reviews are accessible and uh, many have read, so that makes our task a little easier. And uh, uh, so we may take less time. So what I wanted to mention, of course, I liked the work, first of all, because today social philosophy when it faces the need to analyze the Soviet period and to find there interesting something interesting and does not deny its entire heritage because uh, as it might happen during some periods that is why uh, this is should we should welcome this courage secondly here you should also be realistic and uh, preparing for today's session i looked at uh, lifshitz selected as, a, as a, uh, an expert on social studies, vulgar psychology, of course, we, we cannot deny this, uh, so we cannot idealize certain figures. So the uh, is, 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 his, is, works as well as modernism in art, the vulgar sociology is uh, of course, uh, he wrote, so uh, his writings were interesting and up-to-date, very relevant. So it uh, should be also be adequate to the contribution uh, he made into the development of the Marxist philosophy. Second point, second thing I liked, which was mentioned, is uh, interdisciplinarity of the work uh, in the future, uh, the future belongs to interdisciplinary knowledge when historians, philosoph philosophers, and uh, cultural studies uh, will study together, phenomena together, and the author proves that uh, all, a lot has been done in this sphere. I liked here that the Alexei Sergeyevich uh, worked a lot in the archives. Uh, how uh, many uh, from uh, individual archives become uh, individual archives of interesting thinkers become available. So he uses this interesting archive. Uh, he's trying to communicate to make it available, and so this uh, should we should we can only welcome many questions asked in 1920s, 1930s or later, uh, they are still relevant today. Uh, we may see the problem uh, which uh, we have to rethink and without this heritage it's uh, hard to explain what is happening next and as for let me get back to the thesis, uh, let me say that the thesis uh, has been developed uh, with all the applicable regulations of the attestation commission it corresponds all the necessary requirements and even in my review I did not go into criticism and in my opinion uh, the, the it has much more Good poems. I like the passion of the author. Uh, second, 
I liked his st scientific style. I uh, read, have to read many works. And uh, it happens that not many people have this talent. So I would like to encourage uh, Mr. Lagriff to continue his work and develop in this field. And in conclusion, I'd like to say that the thesis by uh, Lagriff Alexeyevich corresponds to the basic requirements established by the order on uh, uh, awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philosophy, specialization 090011, social philosophy. Uh, Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the author. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Alexander Nikolaevich. Uh, will you answer? Thank you, Alexander Nikolaevich, uh, for your for reviewing my work. I will try in the future uh, to live up uh, to your good words. Thank you. Uh, that's all, Alexis Sergeyevich. Yes, thank you. And now it is my turn. A review of the chairman. I'd like to uh, warn that my review in itself has no criticism that would prevent uh, Alexis Sergeyevich to be awarded the degree uh, of candidate of philosophical, uh, but uh, I, based, uh, I, I, I based my review on, the, on classical Marxism, uh, which I read, and this work which I read Twice, I'd like to give my evaluation based on my personal understanding of what is Marxism. So my conclusion in itself, uh, it does not uh, reveal those claims, those critical remarks uh, I put. As is not, uh, but these are points for discussion rather than critical remarks. Uh, proposed by the author in this of this work uh, that please uh, do not misunderstand me uh, the work is interesting uh, is, uh, is highly interesting no one nobody can deny that and as uh, of course it it's relevant as uh, the his, uh, philosophical system of Michael Lipset uh, the of uh, universal Marxist philosophy of history, as translation of historic material into the language. Uh, it uh, has many points for discussion, uh, which, uh, which is a milestone for the development of philosophical studies. And uh, yet, uh, in addition to many good points, uh, the work, the uh, hard work, as results from hard work of the author, uh, published and unpublished works of Michael Lifshit, as uh, has already been discussed, and some points for discussion. Uh, it's necessary to focus on some key points uh, to clarify the author's position. So the first point I'd like to draw your attention to is Nikita Vsevolodich Kuznetsov, as many uh, is, contains many, uh, uh, the work mentions Arslanov many times, and here in the introduction, uh, there is a large text dedicated to the achievement uh, presented by uh, Arslanov, uh, analysis of uh, Lifshitz's philosophical system, which uh, finally, for the first time, according to the author, uh, that the nucleus of Lifshitz's philosophy is a reality of uh, the ideal as, as the, mati the matter is which Lifshitz called an a priori fact. And uh, in connection with this, I have some, some doubt uh, about this, that the nucleus of Lifshitz's system uh, is, was not a revolution in the Marxist philosophy, but incorporated 
uh, Marxism into Marxism as uh, the ideal uh, uh, being at the origin of existence, Putin uh, making them real. Uh, so that means uh, deviate from Marxism. And uh, uh, so this is not historical materialism. This is not a negative version of Marxism, as the author calls it. Uh, is, is, uh, and, or, or the author is, is Mikhail Lifshitz incorporated the ideal into matter, or Marxism turned not into a miracle, but into a monster, a continuous and thoughtful negation of the real, whereas Marxism simply reduced the ideal to its service to men, brought it to the same means as matter as the benefit for the man itself. Here, I would like to point that translating uh, achievements of classical philosophy into the language of materialism is quite problematic because uh, in order to, this in my opinion, uh, is, uh, to make it uh, easy to understand, I draw the attention to the fa founding fathers of this and I'm quoting Engels I'm from Ante Durin, which uh, is uh, the realization of the existing German idealism is completely false, inevitably led to materialism, but it should be noted not just to the metaphysical, purely mechanical materialism of the 18th century, in contrast to the naively revolutionary, simple reaction of the previous history, the modern materialism, sees the history the, as, as the process of human development and sets its task to discover the laws of movement of this process, and so on. In both cases, the modern materialism is essentially dialectical and no longer needs any philosophy that stands above other sciences. As soon as each individual science is required to find its place in the universal connection of things and knowledge, any special science about these universal connections becomes superfluous. And then all of the previous philosophy, the doctrine of thinking and its laws, formal logic and uh, everything else is included in the positive science of nature and history. Therefore, the very statement of the goal by the author already comes into conflict with historical materialism for, as it appears, uh, from the, uh, the falsity of, of uh, a materialistic understanding of history, the falsity of German idealism leads to historical and not the achievements of the, of the classical uh, philosophy. Uh, also, I have some other considerations. Uh, the purpose of the thesis, which um, is addressing the philosophical system of Lipschitz to substantiate the possibility of the existence of the Marxist philosophy of history does not correspond to the stated research study. Problematization of the philosophy of history, which the author understands a set of methodological approaches, problems, and complexes of solutions, and substantiating the possibility of existence of an integral and independent Marxist philosophy as a result of the appeal to the philosophical system of myths, there are two different research topics. If they are related to each other as something in common, then only the German concept of philosophy of history. Further, the author, this methodological principle of the construction of the philosophy, takes the dialogue of Lipschitz with various ideas and thinkers. This dialogue as a two-faced and multi-faced genus appears set as the, as the methodological principle conceptual reconstruction of philosophy of history uh, able to uh, this principle of philosophical reconstruction and the conceptual views of pluralism. Then the form uh, or type of philosophical structure title paragraph one of the thesis or further a conceptual reconstruction of views on the problems or a form of dialogue and methodological approach in the conclusion. The author, this dialogue is a methodological principle of reconstruction, the form and the methodological approach. So what is dialogue? Uh, we uh, use the uh, concept too easily. Yes. And one more 
comment which I would like to uh, give here about the categorized thicket, which is in the uh, center of the philosophy. To this, the author devotes the entire first chapter. There's is a lot in the title of paragraph, but since the aesthetic point of view of Marxism is a basis for translation of uh, and these two opposites, the methodological approach is on page 14 of the thesis, the author would have to disclose in detail and to show how it is possible the heuristic potential, whereas in reality the society and nature involve, evolving on their own, driven uh, aesthetics and not related as manifestation of these laws allow us to see logarithm as aesthetic and believe this is the basis that denies uh, black erasing differences to the point of no return, they will begin complete oblivion and depriving of its own independence both the classical and Marxist philosophy of history. Speaking about the laws of development of society, uh, the, Marx noted that morality is a shaky foundation and the more significant, the more shaky the foundation is aesthetics. In general, it should be stated the result of uh, uh, reading this study, this debatable nature is no soul, which gives food for serious reflection on the fate of the modern Marxist philosophy, its role in understanding reality and its significance in the formation of consciousness, which requires fulfilling ideas uh, that are not detached from reality, but are increasingly approaching, reflecting the modern problems, the theoretical solution of which from the standpoint of the Marxist philosophy becomes an urgent historical necessity of the Russian society. The thesis by Lager of Alexis Sergeyevich on the theme problematization of philosophy history in the works of Mikhail Lifshitz meets the basic requirements established by the order uh, on the order of uh, awarding academic degrees at the Petersburg University. And the degree applement, Lagorev uh, Alexis Sergeyev deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philosophy of sciences, specialty 090011, social philosophy. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated. Thank you for your attention. Alexis Sergeyevich, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Alexander Ivanovich, for your review. Uh, and, uh, I'd like to touch upon uh, most uh, issues. First of all, I'd like to note that my work uh, does not deal with interpretation of Mikhail Lifshitz by Arslanov, but directly the ideas and concepts of Lifshitz himself, where I rely on the works of Arslanov as a fundamental research of a leading specialist in this field. So absolutely all the concepts listed by Alexander Ivanovich, the reality of the ideal, etc., were repeatedly expressed by Lifshitz himself in press. Here you can point, for example, to Lifshitz's many uh, time quoted report at Hegelian Congress, Spirit and its Reality, in which he states, and this is a quote, that realities are universals. It's also worth pointing out the great work, The Man of the Thirties, in which Lifshitz formulates axioms of his dialectical on technosiology, where Alexander Ivanovich refers to the fruits of interpretation of Mikhail Lifshitz and by Arslana. Finally, the archival publications and above all dialogue with Ilyenkov, I already mentioned, also confirmed that we are talking about the original and aesthetic ideas of uh, Lifshitz himself. Uh, the problem of the ideal on which Alexander Sergeyevich focused his attention is Alexander Ivanovich, is undoubtedly one of the most discussed problems of the Marxist philosophy, in particular, Lush's famous book, Dialogue with Ilyenkov, is completely devoted to this. At uh, its time, it was originally published uh, as a part of this manuscript, it gave rise to a, a discussion that continues to this day. What is the ideal from the point of Marx? This discussion is truly immense and we cannot dwell on it in detail today. However, I should note that according to Lifshitz, in order for the ideal to be produced by the human head and objectified by the human practice, it is necessary for this ideal to exist in the human head and in the human practice and in nature. Thus, according to Lifshitz, the ideal is real. 
outside human consciousness, existing boundaries and norms of the development of objects, being reflected by the human consciousness. They are translated into his language and appear in the form of concepts. In turn, in the context of these norms of natural limits, uh, make its actual basis. In my work, I try to touch on this topic to the extent that it is related to the problems of philosophy of history. But based on the nature of Alexander Ivanovich's comments, it becomes clear that it was necessary to do this in more detail. I, let me also note that the objectivity of existence of a priori facts, in my opinion, does not differ even from the pre-Marx materialism, as Alexander Ivanovich writes about it. The very term that Lifshitz uses for these objective mirrors was borrowed from Francis Bacon. The prerogative instances in Bacon's theory of knowledge were essentially intended to solve the same problem as in Lifshitz's dialectical antagonistiology, the problem of induction. In this sense, we are not talking about the setting of motivating forces at the beginning of being, but about a single chain of development of this very material being, of part of which is the man and the human society. The uh, chain of development that leads to the birth of the ideal in the material itself. Regarding the remark that the falsity of the German idealism leads to historical materialism and not the achievements of the former classical philosophy of history leads to the latter. I can only refer to the classical work of Vladimir Lenin, three sources and three components of Marxism, which, in my opinion, shows exactly how the achievements of the former classical philosophy lead to historical materialism. And Lenin wrote more about this in the philosophical notebooks. However, in the uh, statement quoted by Alexander Ivanovich, he refers to the philosophical system of Lipschitz to justify the possibility of an integral and independent Marxist philosophy of history as a translation into the language of historical materialism of the problems of classical philosophy. So this provision is about, it's not that historical material arises from the achievements of the former classical philosophy, but that the Marxist philosophy is possible precisely as a materialistic reading of the problems and solutions of the former philosophy of history. This concept, in my opinion, fits perfectly into what Lenin wrote in his article on the meaning of uh, militant materialism, namely the materialistic leading of Hegel's dialectic. The only difference is that in my work we are talking not only about Hegel but also about the uh, whole of classical philosophy. Regarding the remark uh, according to which problematization of the philosophy of history by which the author understands a set of methodological approaches, problems, complexes or solutions, and justification of the stability of existence of an integral independent Marxist philosophy. Uh, there are two different research topics, and if they relate to each other, something in common, only the common concept of philosophy of history. So uh, here I think it should be noted that the problematization of the philosophy of history as a set of methodological approaches, uh, problems, and uh, solutions, in my opinion, is directly related to the aim of the research because disclosure of the methodological approach of Lipschitz, statement of problems, and etc., and substantiates the possibility of the existence of the Marxist philosophy of history, in particular its existence as a translation of the actual content of the philosophical classics into the language of historical materialism. In short, we may say that a problematization of the philosophy of history in the works of Lipschitz is a materialistic reading of the classical problems of the philosophy. Thus, uh, the study of this problematization allows us to speak about the historical materialism in this context. And finally, regarding the uh, statement, uh, what is the aesthetic point of view? This question is, uh, remains unanswered. In here, uh, in this connection, I would like to mention, for example, page 78-29. Thus, the aesthetic point of view on a story which we begin on history, on which we begin our study, can be understood as a view of hi, on history from the point of view of self-reflection, from the point of view of objective or growth of consciousness, or in other words, from the point of view of growth of consciousness, of the core of consciousness. The specific content of this provision is disclosed throughout the work. And in conclusion, I'd like to say that 
I am very grateful to Alexander Ivanovich for his critical remarks. I think the uh, more criticism I uh, get regarding provisions of my work, the better uh, I will be able uh, to uh, focus on these uh, problems in my future work. Thank you, Alexis Sergeyevich. Well, dear members of the Visitation Council, uh, are you all, is everybody satisfied with the answers of Alexis Sergeyevich? Yes, we are. Yes, we are quite satisfied. Let us move on. Uh, and according to the procedure, questions. Uh, no questions were, have been sent by email, so I have nothing to read here. And uh, so we, no questions have been sent. And uh, uh, next, uh, after members of the Dissertation Council, make their speeches. The floor should be given to the academic advisors. Dear Eduard Alexandrovich, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am here. Could you tell us about the degree applicant, about his work, and uh, which provisions of his thesis do you support, and which deserve special attention, in your opinion? Thank you for giving the floor to me. Uh, since my review uh, is, uh, has been available. I'll try to be short and we'll just add a couple of words uh, to what has already been said by the members of the Dissertation Council and to what will be said by Alexei Mikhailovich, who was the leading academic advisor. Uh, here, Mikhail Anatolovich and Alexander Mikhailovich mentioned the interdisciplinary nature of the work. Uh, this, indeed, is the strong point of the thesis, and here we may say that, indeed, the source base of the, in the, uh, plays a, a, ma a major role. The author has worked with the uh, Lifshitz archives at the Russian Academy of Sciences, uh, in the uh, Pushkin House, the Department of Manuscripts, Lukacs's archive in Budapest uh, has introduced these materials into the scientific circulation, but the most important thing is that the source aspect uh, does not overload uh, aspects of the conceptual aspect. Alexis Sergeyevich managed to find uh, a balance between these two aspects of his work, and in this work, and in his articles and in his translations, which uh, uh, Alexei Sergeyevich always acts as a mature researcher, a representative of uh, scientific cooperation, and in my opinion, his work corresponds to all the requirements applied to the candidate's thesis. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you. Uh, Eduard Alexandrovich, let us give the floor to Alexei Mikhailovich Sokolov. Please start your camera. Please kindly tell us about the degree applicant. I uh, think he has, he uh, just informed me that he's, uh, re he's restarting his computer. But in the, uh, he, he, yes, he, uh, made a short speech in the beginning. So, so there's no... So this is... This is not really a serious issue, procedural issues. Alexei Mikhailovich, where are you? So maybe we could consider, uh, Alexei Mikhailovich, can you hear me? Just please tell us about the degree applicant and his work. Can you tell us something good? Only, uh, only good words, 
I may say, because as Alexander Nikolaevich uh, said today, I fully agree with Alexander Nikolaevich that the thesis by Lagorev is a very brave move uh, in a uh, Platonov sense of the word, and I'm very glad that Alexei succeeded with this work. And from the reviews of the council members, it is also obvious, it became obvious. I'm glad, uh, uh, pleased with the, how the defense session went. I support Alexei. I think he managed very well to accomplish the task he has set himself. Uh, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Alexei Mikhailovich. I'd like to say, have to say the following. Since we are working in the remote access mode, do dissertation council members and others present, or maybe the degree applicant himself, any unanswered, unclear questions related to working in the remote access mode? No. If we have any such questions, then let me ask, if there are no such questions, let me ask uh, the council members. Now we have the opportunity to take a technical break to discuss the results of the defense. Do you think we need such a technical break to discuss the results? No, we don't. No, we don't. We don't need. Excellent. That's excellent. If we don't need to discuss the results, let us proceed to voting. Okay. Uh, mem opinion of each dissertation council members shall be given in public and individually. Uh, here, uh, so Lagorev should be disconnected. Irina Vasilina, why? So we, so should we, so we need, that's uh, Alexander Ivanovich, uh, we have to switch the sound off if we take a technical break. So no, we, we don't discuss. So let's proceed to voting. So voting. Yes, voting shall be uh, public if you don't, if the as a break is not needed. So we don't need, Let, we proceed to voting. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Okay. During the time. So stop online broadcasting. Kindly request guests and colleagues not participate in the dissertation council. The applicant to leave the council or switch the sound. I will inform you when the discussion is over. So we proceed to voting. Is that correct? Uh, no. For vote, voting shall be vote, voting shall be public. Then so we sh shall not discuss. This. Yes. Uh, am I saying something wrong, Alexander Ivanovich? If we wanted to discuss, then indeed we will have to ask everybody to leave. But if you follow the procedure, please read uh, the text further. Please turn the sound on and make sh sure we are on air. Then each of us have to give his opinion in public. Stick. So we, we will not discuss. No, we will not discuss. So we shall give our opinions. Okay, then. Okay. Then what shall we do? We shall uh, let us continue our session. 
Dear colleagues, uh, please turn the sound on and make sure we are on air. The, and the most critical moment of the meeting is coming. Please check that we can all see and hear each other. Yes, uh, yes. Can we all, can you all see and hear us? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, uh, Alexander Nikolaevich, Alexei Sergeyevich, I put the, if we can hear each other, I put the question of awarding to Lagrov Alexis Sergeyevich the degree of candidate of philosophical sciences, academic specialization 090011, social philosophy, to the open individual vote. Let me remind you that a decision of the decision council shall be considered positive if more than a half but not less than three members of the council who took part in the session voted for it in accordance with Article 23 of the order. Well, Council made a company of the Democrats your opinion. I am for awarding the degree. Thank you. Council member Kuznetsov Nikita Vseldoch, your opinion. I am, I think, Lagorev Alexis Sergeyevich deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philosophical sciences, academic specialization 090011, social philosophy. Thank you. Thank you, Nikita Vseveldic. Osipov Igor Dmitrievich, your opinion? I think Lagrev Alexis definitely deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of philosophical sciences, specialization, social philosophy. Thank you. Council member Arefiev Mikhail Anatolovich, your opinion deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of I, I vote for awarding the degree. Thank you. Council member Danila Alexander Nikolaevich, your opinion. I vote for, I support awarding the degree. And me, Chairman of the Council, Strevko Alexander Ivanovich, I am for awarding to Lagorev Alexis Sergeyevich, the degree of candidate for philosophical sciences, academic specialization 090011, social philosophy. Thus, dear colleagues, let me inform you that out of six members of the decision council participating, uh, six voted for, uh, no one voted against, no one abstained. The decision to award to Lagorev Alexis Sergeyevich the degree of candidate of philosophical sciences Academic specialization 090011, social philosophy has been made. Let us, let us vote. We have already voted. We have already voted. But, dear colleagues, since our meeting was held in the remote access mode, do the council members of the applicant and others present have any questions, comments on the procedure of the meeting? No. I have to get answers from everybody. Do we have any comments on, uh, regarding the procedure? Uh, the, uh, uh, let me, on my behalf, uh, on my behalf as the chairman to congratulate Alexis Sergeyevich Lagorev with being awarded the uh, uh, degree of candidate of sciences and wish him the uh, same challenging path in science which he has already tasted and uh, let him move, move in the same direction, gaining new knowledge and uh, um, getting closer to reality. Thank you. Uh, who of the decision council members would like to speak? Uh, nobody wants. Then the closing, let's give the uh, floor to the degree applicant for his closing remarks. Uh, thank you, Alexander Ivanovich. In my closing remarks, I can only say thank you to all members of the dissertation council, to the chairman of the dissertation council, and first of all to my academic advisor, uh, Alexei Mikhailovich and Eduard Alexandrovich, for their help. During, without their assistance, I wouldn't be able to complete my research to reach this uh, defense stage. 
This path was really challenging. I had to overcome many difficulties which were uh, beyond the scientific realm. So I'd like to say thank you again and thank everybody present and uh, those who are not present, uh, but who, those who submitted their reviews, uh, Viktor Georgievich Arslanov and Mikhail Vasilovich Popov. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alexis Sergeyevich. We, once again, we congratulate you and we wish you success in, in, in teaching as well, in science and teaching. At that, I declare the session closed. Thank you for your participation. It's a shame, it's a pity to say goodbye, but we were on time. Uh, it took us two, minute, two hours and 10 minutes. Uh, thank you, thank you. Please stop uh, the online broadcasting. Thank you.